Welcome back to our Life Group Leaders Lounge. My name is Brooks. I'm your host, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Braden and Raquel. What's up? And we are pumped today to have Pastor Joanne Johnson on with us. What's Hello. up? Oh, good to be here. Thank you for being with us today. So Pastor Johnson, Pastor Joanne <laughs> is our Pastor Johnson. Pastor Joanne is our executive pastor here at New Break Church. And we're glad that you're here with us today. Um, I know that one of your main roles as a pastor with our team is that you help our pastors to grow. And getting to know you more, that's been a big passion of yours, is really helping leaders grow and develop in all that God has for them. So can you tell us a little bit about why being a a growing leader is so important to you um, in your life and as a leader? Well, I'll say from my earliest that I can remember, I've always wanted to strive and be better and learn more and do more. That's just always been a part of who I've been. I remember when I first started in ministry, it was always taking a course or getting my credential or taking reading a book or going to a seminar, like always trying to learn. And when I was serving a few years as an executive pastor at another church, I wanted to go on and get my master's. And I was really excited because I wanted to have that knowledge. And I wanted to go and get a um, master's in organizational psychology or business, MBA, something like that, something where I could learn you know, business principles, accounting principles, because I wanted to continue to get better at what I did. And the actually the opportunity opened up for me to take a master's program in spiritual and with an emphasis in spiritual leadership. So I'd be doing more Bible classes, pastoral theology. And at first I was disappointed. I have to be, I was disappointed. I was like, I really wanted to like do the, you know, the boring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wanted to do like the business. I'm like, I'm a pastor all the time and I want to do the business stuff. But what I realized the first course was all about character and leadership development. Mm -hmm. And it basically the premise was if you're not spiritually growing and growing in your maturity and your morals and your character, you're actually not going to be a better leader. Mm -hmm. And so I've taken that to heart personally and realize that it doesn't matter how good I am at spreadsheets or how good I am um, at managing structures and systems. If I am not personally developing my own faith and growing as an individual and in a, as a Christian first, there's no way I can be effective. And studies have shown that that's the same thing for businesses as well. If with, mm. No matter what situation a leader finds themselves in, if they're not growing, if they're not maturing and growing in Christian values and faith, they're not going to they're be as effective as they could be or handle the challenges that leadership ultimately faces. So that's why I'm so passionate about is I had that first revelation myself, but then now I want to be a part of being a part of a place that sees other people grow and reach their full potential. Mm-hmm. That's great. Do yeah. you have, do you have a scripture that you feel like speaks to you about this topic that we can kind of anchor in this morning? Yeah, I was, as I was praying about this, I, God led me to Luke chapter eight, and it's the story of the parable of the sower. And it's a wonderful story where Jesus is basically, I'm going to sum it up. Pastor uh, Braden is our, he's like our theology guru here. So <laughs> if he, if I say something wrong, Braden, will you correct me or fix my theology? Sure. But okay. I don't uh, anticipate needing to. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Um, so the, in summary, Jesus talks about how he spreads the word of God or good seed on multiple different kinds of soil. And the soil that the seed falls on that's actually going to produce good fruit is in verse 15. It says the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, God's word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. And I want to be the kind of person that when I go to church, when I'm in my life group, when I'm studying God's word at home, when I'm worshiping, that I am a person of noble and good heart, that I hear God's word, I retain it, and then I persevere by trying to put it into practice. So I want to be growing every time I go to church and every time I go to life group. I want to walk in and say, there's something that I'm not doing as good as I could be doing, and how can I apply this today? Because the consequence is, the verse right before it is verse 14, it says, the seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. So I don't want to be a person that's consumed with worry in whatever, wherever my life is, or that's so focused on the weekend and what I, what I possess and what I own that I'm not maturing. So I want to make sure that I'm that person of noble and good heart and character. 
I mean, I just have to say, yeah. I think that it's really great. And I uh, like, I think that worry one is such a big piece of it because I think sometimes we don't prioritize even the time we need to spiritually grow because we're so worried about all these other things. It's almost almost like this lie or trap of thinking there's never enough time. And so we don't steward our time to grow in Christ and abide in Him. And so, uh, it, again, because what's fueling that? I'm so worried about all these other things. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't become a priority in our lives when everything else becomes the priority. So growth kind of comes down on the level of like, I just kind of hope it'll happen versus I'm right. going to seek it out in my life. I know we just did a, a retreat here uh, for our life group leaders, and um, a lot of our leaders that came were just, they just kept being reminded of how much they need this, how much they need time in their life to seek the Lord and to receive from mm-hmm. Him. And it was kind of a light bulb moment for a lot of us of, of just wow, how important it is to get away, to connect with God, to grow the internal person, and how it doesn't just happen by happenstance. It, it's an intention uh, of your heart to do that. Well, and you know, Joanne, you're you're admittedly an Enneagram three, and some of the things you were saying mm-hmm. earlier just spewed out Enneagram three yes. language. <laughs> and don't you think that sometimes, like this idea that we want to be more productive, the funny thing about that is it's almost like the more we abide in the person of Jesus, like. It makes us more fruitful, therefore, i.e. productive. But so I guess what's your experience with that, with the tension of wanting to be more productive in terms of like the output as a leader, but like that also like abiding in him, the slowing down of that actually is the, yeah, help me out here. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's so true because say you've got a problem and a problem that you're like, I've got to solve this problem, whether it's with a staff member or organizationally or Um, whatever, I've got a problem. And you think if I just grind and I sit here and I try to figure it out, I'm going to solve the problem. And really what I found over and over again is what you're talking about, which is when I step back, when I slow down, when I seek God, when I hear, read his word and spend time in his word, that's where the answers come. That's where Mm. the peace comes. What men, sometimes as leaders, we make difficult decisions. We make difficult decisions. We have difficult problems that we're encountering, you know, uh, especially over the last year and a half where you're juggling your own stuff. And, you know, it's been a hard Mm -hmm. year as a leader and we've had to either grow or really grow through this. I think I, I'm not sure how you guys have experienced it, but it's been hard. Yeah. Um, something you were saying, like, I was just, the word kept coming to me, proactive, proactive. And yes, we're so ingrained to believe that like we have to always be super proactive. And like you said, sit and grind. Um, And I've realized I was kind of joking with my husband about this. He's military and he's super, super proactive about things. And I said, sometimes you just need to sit and wait, not only for the words, but let God work. He's doing things all the time. And sometimes if you're, if you're jumping the gun or you're having, too many conversations with too many people and actually like almost becoming annoying, you know, like a little kid tapping on sometimes just wait because all these things are happening and sitting in that sitting in the word and sitting and waiting. Um, and another thing I wanted to share in that same similar conversations we've been having, um, because he's going through the honor foundation, he's retired from the military. So it's this whole life transition. Um, and something he learned during that class is you cannot manage time. You don't own it. You can't control it. It's something that is just constantly happening. Um, but you manage your energy. That's what you do. And and we talked about boundaries, um, a couple episodes ago. And I think it's very similar in that. What are you going to choose to expend your energy into? And it should be growing and it should be things that are going to be fruitful in your life, um, as a leader. Yeah. I know one of the things that I had to do to overcome some of this is I actually on my phone, I put a timer on how much time I can spend on my social media apps. So they'll like deactivate at a certain amount of time. Cause I realized I was spending a lot of time just scrolling through there and there's great Mm. stuff. I follow there's pastors. I follow inspirational quotes, but I was like, you know what? This is not how this is. I'm not necessarily growing through this. And so I want to turn on other apps and I want to spend time. Um, the U version Bible app now has a prayer com- feature. I don't know if you guys have seen it has a prayer feature component to it where it's the same type of thing. It's like a meditative prayer that you kind of click through and you read it and you can play music if you want to, but like awesome. there's so many great things that our phone, if we're going to be engaged in our phone, yep. um, that don't have to be social media. That could be some other thing that help us grow. Mm. I think something you said earlier, uh, Pastor Joanne, when you were, you were talking about the stunting, that maybe this is the way I heard it, but like when you stop growing, you kind of, your growth gets stunted and then it feels like, 
I don't know, you almost, you get bored, burned out. Stagnant. Um, yeah, stagnant. Reason. I think that's a good word. And I, I'm thinking for maybe some of our leaders that maybe are listening here and they maybe they feel like they've been in the grind. You know, they've been balancing family and, and they've been leaders for a long time and it just starts to feel the same. You know, another semester rolls by. I got to pick another topic. Oh, another life group came. Mm. And it easily starts to feel like like a burden when, when you first started, it was something that you were passionate about and you thought, wow, this is really exciting and new. I wonder if that thing that's missing is the personal growth, where you are so focused on other people growing and other people's challenges that you just lost sight of, of your growth as a leader and how important that is. What would you say are some steps that leaders can take to maybe reignite that passion for growth or maybe just to grow uh, beyond where they're at and as a leader, as a Christian? I think one of the most invigorating things that they can do is to start discipling someone else. Because I know if I'm teaching some, if I'm passing on what I've learned to someone else, now I'm going deeper in my leadership. I think mm. you guys have talked about in the past with life groups wanting to like train a leader and train, mm-hmm. like have a, a second leader. Mm-hmm. That has been so invigorating for me because, you know, you can't every day accomplish a new thing. You can't every year, you know, raise the, I can't get a master's program ev- degree every single, you know, there's not, <laughs> you, at some point you're just kind of steady but you find ways to go deeper with the people that are around you and to pour mm. into others. And then that helps elevate you as well and trigger your growth. Now that does not take the place of the spiritual disciplines, but mm-hmm. I think in our culture, we, we have so much elevated progress that we forget that there's a lot of great things that happen in the day to day grind mm. and that faithfulness and perseverance are just as valuable as um, you know, success and fruit, that there's a lot that can happen in the steady, consistent leadership and showing up every week. Mm. I, I remember there was times I, in ministry where it was like week after week, I felt like I was just doing the same thing over and over again. Mm. And I, I wasn't feeling that, that excitement, that same excitement. And I just felt God speak to me over and over. I see you. I see what you're doing, and I want you to continue to be faithful right where you are, even though no one notices you, no one sees what you're doing. And to the life group leader who's sitting there and saying, ah, does pastor, does anyone even see what I'm doing? Does anyone see, is what I'm doing actually meaningful? Yes, it is meaningful. You're impacting people because if you aren't doing it, who would do it? Mm. Who would step in and lead? So thank you for leading, but yes, step, t- go take the next step and pour into another leader. And start seeing how God's going to use you to out- impact others to do what you've done. Yeah, that's fresh. I like that yeah. idea. Finding somebody that you can pour into and just start sharing with them what you're learning, what you've grown in, special fresh things that God is showing you in your word. That's awesome. Um, do you guys have any other ideas of what leaders can do, what steps they can take to grow as a leader? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think, for example, uh, Pastor Joe, and you mentioned this already, but there's environments we're already in that I just think greater intentionality will help us get even more out of it. For example, like you said, most of us, and hopefully we are, plugged into a, uh, being in Sundays. And so since you are there Sundays, you are hearing the Word of God preached. It's a chance to get the most out of it. And so I'm a huge fan of taking notes, and I advocate for taking oh, notes. That's good. And I don't just advocate for taking notes for the very uh, purpose of what you're writing in that moment, even though studies have shown the fact of just writing it down alone, even if you never look at it again, will help you better recall it to memory. But also... Thinking about this in a holistically, okay, I took notes during this sermon. How can I talk about this uh, with my little family? Like, you know, how could this prompt some conversation after church or like with your life group or with someone you're uh, as an apprentice that you're discipling? I- I'm just trying to say that like there's already environments you're learning from. And so how can we repurpose those for those sort of conversations and for growth and to, um, yeah, to bring those into those other ways. Uh, that's yeah, just one idea. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Raquel, what about you? You got anything that you um, help grow? Yeah, I just wanted to touch on, again, something that I, may, yes, it helps. But what you said that really stuck to me, um, I see you. And even in these um, lulls and, and the times that, yeah, you're feeling complacent as a life group leader and like it's just going through the motions is the word I was trying to think of. Um, remember that you're always impacting people. And remember, you know, I think of the kids who always told their parents, you know, you were always there for me. 
that's what they remember about their childhood and about their parents. That's what they would consider, you know, love and, and good parenting is that you were always there for me. Um, and God is always here for us. And so just remembering, just being there, just that presence, um, is huge to your people. Um, I, 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 oh, go ahead. And then I have one more question for you, too. I was going to share a story because um, I'm leading an online, um, we're calling it like a mastermind group with other female pastors across, and there's about five of us in the group. And a couple weeks ago, I just had this sinking feeling, and every live group leader has probably had at some point that like no one was going to show up. I was like, I haven't heard from them. They're all mm. busy moms. It's Zoom. It's easy to be like, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Sure enough, one person showed up and I'm like, are you, so I'm in my mind, I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I've, I've set across, set apart this time. Do they know how busy I am that I did this and I prepared this and I was prepared to do this. And I was like, you know what? God convicted me in that moment and said, you know what? You just be present for that one person that's here Mm -hmm. and you just make it happen for that one person. And so I don't, you know, it's as the executive pastor, you want to see ministry grow. And I'll talk to you guys like, Hey, let's get more people involved in life group. Let's get more leaders. But at the end of the day, if you're a life group leader and you only have two people, three people, you just go deeper and connect with that person because there's a reason why God has you with that small, Mm -hmm. small group. And that evening that I spent with that one person on our zoom call that I took time away from my kids and my husband and my family to be with that one person, she went on to just share with me later how much she appreciated the time that the two of us had to connect and Mm -hmm. that she's, you know, now she's a missionary. She wants to be a missionary. And so she's just in a really big transition point in her life. And it's amazing what God does, even with the small. And so as a church, we always have to keep in mind, yes, we want to reach more people. We want to see more people in life groups, but at the end of the day, what you're doing week in and week out, no matter who shows up, God wants you to pour into those people and give it your best, even if it's small. Yeah. That's so good. I have, I have one more, if that's okay. I have yeah, one I just want to, before yeah, you, you, you throw that question out, I just, one thing that I, I think about as a leader is, you know, it's for me, routine is important, but I find sometimes if I change up my routine as a leader, it helps me to see things differently. Mm. And it even helps the way that I approach study, personal growth. So if I find myself in a certain rut, a lot of times I'll just step back and say, okay, is there something I could do that can just kind of wake me up from this? So is there a book that I can jump into right now that I feel like God is teaching, wants me to get into? Uh, Maybe on a Sunday morning, maybe my mentality of going in isn't, I'm just going to serve and I've got a bunch of people to meet, but God, I'm going to go in with this mentality that you are going to speak to me right now. I want to hear from you this morning. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's a, uh, it's just changing the way I look at things and then diving into something to challenge myself. And that oftentimes kind of kicks me into a, a season of growth for sure. So, uh, Braden, what, what was your question? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I just want to tell everyone that like, I really respect you, Joanne. And like, I think you do lead from a place of authenticity and you show that you care for all the leaders you're pouring into. So I think you're a very credible voice on this subject. But, uh, my last question for you is just like, you know, for those who maybe don't have a consistent devotional life or are trying to reinvigorate that and get that going again what what just simple tips do you have for people for leaders to you know with devotional life this is one of the hardest things to do I have I mean it is even as a pastor it is hard to carve out time because there's just some I've never been a morning person are you guys morning people Mm-mm. morning I am because I have babies now yeah yeah, so. yeah you're forced oh, to, you were like me forced not. yeah <laughs> forced morning people but yeah. if but your most productive time is probably the evening yes. and I remember hearing all of these stories about pastors you know you hear the Billy Graham and all the people that they'd be like four, four o'clock in the morning yes. and they're yeah. they've ground their knees oh, into the that's wood what I was thinking. and you know that's like, what I was thinking and I have carpet and it's like <laughs> I could never measure up to that. Yeah. And I, I want to challenge everyone to think that it's not about the quantity of time because our time is different. If you've got young kids, they wake up when they wake up. So if you get up at five and they're up at five 30, well, then you had 30 minutes, probably yeah. 20 that was spent waking up and getting up a cup of coffee, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's about quality time and making sure that it is somewhere on your calendar. Mm. And if you were to say, well, if I can't do 30 minutes and I'll do nothing, no, 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 no. If you can do five minutes yeah. and every day, if you can drive in the car, one time I had a, a job where I had a long commute 
And I would just listen to the audio Bible on my drive. I was always trying to find creative ways to get it in me. Mm -hmm. So find creative ways to get it in you. Audio Bible, listening to the podcast while you drive, listening to um, devotionals, spending that time. I think because we have that mental barrier that it has to look like a certain way, we don't just don't do it. Mm -hmm. And it's better to do something every day to pour into your faith and to grow and to expand your knowledge of the Bible um, than to do nothing. I mean, honestly, if you were to just give your best to Sunday morning and go to church every Sunday, statistics pre-COVID were that the average church attender, I think, attended like twice a month. And I'm sure that's down to probably once a month now, if not worse than that. And I would encourage you, go to church every Sunday, go to your life group every week, and try to pray or read your Bible for five to 10 minutes every day. And you'd be amazed how much just doing those three things will incredibly grow yeah. your faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a mentor who told me, I sat down for coaching. I was burned out, exhausted. And one of the first things he said to me was, how many times are you reading your Bible a week? And I was like, well, you know, I'm busy with this and this. And he said, okay, here's my challenge. Try to get at least five minutes a day for the next seven days. If you can only do five of the seven, that's fine. But make that your goal. And I was shocked of how much of an impact that made just being consistent, seeking God, even if it is five, 10, whatever you can do, uh, setting aside that time because God wants to meet with us in those moments. I think that's awesome. Um, I have one last question before we, we wrap up here is, you know, just from reflecting on your own growth as a leader and just your passion for helping people grow as leaders, what would you say you've learned about God through your own journey of growing as a leader, as a Christian? Man, um, leadership is hard. Leadership is hard. And um, in, in my program, we talked about like always being able to lead with a whole heart. And there's things in leadership that chip away at our heart. You know, someone betraying us, someone talking behind our back, having to make difficult or unpopular decisions. That is hard. And I've had people say things about me and about my family that have made me want to give up as a leader. And... Um, what I've found is that every time I, I, if I'm not growing, then I'm not continually meeting that challenge and being able to continue to lead as a hard heart, lead with a whole heart. Our hearts can become hardened so easily mm-hmm. in leadership, you know, having to fire someone or having to have a really difficult, uncomfortable conversation with someone. Those are not fun things to do. And they don't make you feel like a good person or a good pastor, but that's part of, you know, the role of leadership is having hard conversations and probably having hard conversations with yourself. Like, what am I doing? My own self-leadership. And what I found is that when I can lean into God when things are hard and trust him when things are hard and cry with him, pray with him. My husband's been such an incredible prayer partner with me through ministry. He was a pastor's kid and missionary kid. And, um, he's walked with me my whole journey in ministry. And I remember the first time I found out that church people, um, could be mean. (laughs) I was like, wait, church people can be mean. I was such a young Christian. (laughs) I was like, wait, they'll say mean things about the pastor. I'm like, who does that? Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't know, I didn't grow up in church. So I didn't really know that people inside the church are just as messed up oftentimes as people Mm -hmm. outside the church, but we think that everything's going to be perfect. Um, but I've just learned that God can be faithful and to never stop letting my heart be affected by things to Mm -hmm. never give it, get a hard heart. So I think that's the one thing I've, God's really shown me is that if I'm continually growing, he can continue to keep my heart soft so that the things I don't just keep walking by, problems and trauma and not let it affect me. That a life changed is encouraging and that people struggling doesn't become commonplace. There's a thing called compassion fatigue. I don't know if you've heard of it, Hmm. where it's like, how many problems can I solve that suddenly I don't want to solve any problems Mm. because I'm so sick of hearing Mm. about all the problems that have to be solved. And Lord, let me never have compassion Mm. fatigue, but always be able to be growing in my leadership so that I can be present fully for every moment. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy that God doesn't have compassion fatigue, you know, when yeah. he hears all the problems of the world. Yeah. So that's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. 
Well, guys, let's wrap it up here. So thank you so much for joining us today for our podcast. And uh, we hope you're encouraged, inspired. And uh, again, we want to thank you, Pastor Joanne, for being here with us. It's a big blessing to have you here. So uh, we'll talk to you soon. Until next time. Bye-bye.